There are many different ways that companies can become more cyber resilient through analytics. For example, we can do cost-benefit analyses of various what we call cyber controls. These are things like multi-factor authentication, password management, encryption of data at rest and in transit. Now, these things are not cheap to implement. In many cases, they actually can be quite expensive. However, the benefit of implementing them can well exceed those costs. And this is where analytics can really start to help. Using analytics, we can show how losses are decreased when you become more cyber resilient. This incentivizes our clients to do a better job because they realize they'll be less likely to have an incident or a breach. And it incentivizes the insurance industry to give them a better deal on insurance as well because they'll be less likely to have to pay out a claim. So all of these things together really allow analytics to help make the world more resilient against cyber attacks. We have a lot of exciting things going on over the next year or so. First, we're looking to build out more of our internal models. We certainly have many internal models today for things like privacy breach, for business interruption, and for ransomware. However, there's a lot more that we can do to expand upon those models and really make them even more useful for our clients. Beyond that, though, we're also looking to partner with the best external data sources for things like cyber incident data, for cyber technographic data, and even for loss modeling. So there's a lot of areas that we're really focused on over the next year, and to do this, we're growing our team. We're hiring across the world for cyber modeling capabilities, and we're really looking to work with clients to help shape our roadmap. Indeed, we're not just building these models for ourselves, we're building them for our clients. So having clients really help us understand where their directions are, where their needs are for modeling, helps us inform our roadmap and our direction. There's a lot of things that a company can do to improve their cyber resilience. And I think it really does start with the people. If people are going into a computer with a cyber mindset, they're much less likely to click a bad link. They're much less likely to expose information they shouldn't be exposing. And it really does make your culture more resilient if you start with the people. Of course, there's a lot of things that you can do practically as well. There's a lot of training opportunities for people. In fact, you could send out fake scam emails and see who clicks on them. And then those who click on it either can be uh, shamed or they can be made to feel really guilty about themselves. And that tends to mean that when the real scam comes, they won't actually click upon it. So those are some good things that can be done there. Of course, a bit self-serving is on the analytics side. To improve your cyber resilience, you really need to know where you stand now. So that involves going through a, a cyber modeling exercise on your company, understanding what you can do for the most bang for your buck. Meaning if I have $100 to spend on cyber, is it best to buy more insurance? Is it best to fix problem X? Or is it best to do something completely different? And this is where cyber analytics and cyber modeling can be very influential. Should I invest that in training? Should I bring in multi-factor authentication? Should I have new encryption or tokenization on my network? Again, these are a lot of the questions that can be answered through cyber analytics.